Hey, what's up guys? It's Graphic Phoenix back with another video today. And today we have a much requested video from you guys. This is how to take care of your Veil Chameleon. So as you guys may know, this is Rango, the super translucent Veil Chameleon. I've had him for a couple years now. Uh, I think coming on three. First we'll just address the fact that this is for the older chameleons. Uh, this isn't for your babies. I'll have a care video of them when I get my babies. They should be hatching any time now, so hopefully that'll be coming out pretty quickly. But let's get started. So these guys, as you guys all know, are called the Veil Chameleon or Yemen Chameleon. Uh, their reason why they are called Yemen Chameleon is because they're found in Yemen as well as Saudi Arabia. But that's not really important. Yemen. <laughs> First, I'm going to break the misconception of that they are hard to care for. That is simply not true anymore. Captive breeding through reputable breeders and everything like that has really helped these guys out a lot. These guys would be a fairly decent pet starter reptile if you guys do your research and have the means to fit their needs. So we'll start with males like Rango here. They reach up to two feet in length and are much more vibrant. He's not all that vibrant right now. Normally he comes out and uh, is amazing colors. I'll show a picture of that right now. Generally the male's lifespans range from six to eight years. That's provided the good care, good diet, everything like that. Going on to females, like you see now is Kula. They generally reach up to 18 inches. Generally they stay a lot smaller, like Kula's maybe a foot, maybe a bit more. Uh, and they generally live from four to six years and the reason there's such a big difference is simply because they produce eggs whether they have been bred or not and that puts a lot of stress on them. It reduces their lifespan quite substantially. Now we'll talk about enclosures. First thing you want to start out with mesh cages. Mesh people please mesh or screen whatever you want to call it. Same thing. Not glass. Glass create stagnant air pockets and that can lead to respiratory infections and something else with glass is it's actually really hard to find a tank that is built in the way a chameleon would need it and for males like you can see here it's fairly large and two foot by two foot by four feet tall is ideal however the bigger is better as they say whereas for females 18 by 18 by 3 foot tall is generally the standard. I know Kula's in a much smaller tank than that, but she's getting upgraded uh, into the cage that you see now, the Reptibreeze, and that is perfect size for them. And just a tip for the younger chameleon keepers out there, you want to keep them in a smaller enclosure and work your way up, or section off a cage and only allow them to have a certain part of the cage. Just a smaller tank uh, reduces the stress a little bit, and that way they'll grow up nice and healthy. All chameleons should be really housed separately. I know that if Kula lived with Rango, she'd be harassed for uh, sexual favors at all times. And that is simply not good for the females. The chameleons will always overwork them. So you want to house them separately. Including juveniles. Generally... Three to four months is where you want to start separating them. That's when I separated my last batch of babies and they did perfectly fine. For decor of the cage, as you can see, in Rango's cage especially, there are plenty of hiding areas that he can get into. He doesn't hide all that much and he seems pretty content just sitting on top of his branches. You want to also use fake plants. Generally plastic, not silk. Uh, I've heard that some chameleons will try and eat the silk plants. Fortunately, I haven't had that with any of mine, but keep your eye out for that. As well as vines, they should be used as often as possible to create pathways. Like in Rango's cage here, he's got a ton of vines that go all the way around his tank and allow him to traverse freely without necessarily having to go on the wall. A main component should be live plants, you guys. Live plants produce, one, purify the air, as I'm sure anybody that's older than whatever grade 8 knows, photosynthesis, and they also help with humidity, so that's the main reason why you don't want to necessarily have them for hiding spots, but more for humidity and for water droplets to accumulate for them to drink. Proper plants that can be kept 
in their tank range from Ficus to Schlaflera, as well as Hibiscus plants and Pothos. Next we'll move on to lighting from there. Chameleons do need two different kinds of lights. Uh, one heat bulbs and the other UVA, UVB. For heat bulbs, they don't seem to recognize um, heat emitters, hot rocks, um, heated vines, anything like that, as much as they do a basking bulb. So I do strongly recommend getting a basking bulb over anything else. And generally, they should be placed six to eight inches under the basking spot. For me, I have a 75 watt bulb that is producing a hot spot which is consistent and uh, Rango does seem to use it quite a lot. However, for you, you just want to test exactly where the hotspot will be and know what the temperatures around that will be, making sure that it's not too hot. And for the UVB, uh, you can have fluorescent strips or the compact fluorescence, uh, just like bulbs, like the Exoterra ones, those work perfectly. You should have UVB because it does help them metabolize calcium and helps prevent MBD, metabolic bone disease. If you don't know what that is, just look up a picture and <laughs> you'll be horrified. So that's what you want to prevent. Now, after talking about basking spots, we'll talk about temperatures as well. So temperatures in the ambient cage should be anywhere from 72 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That way they can get away from the heat if they absolutely need to. Whereas basking temp should be around 85 to 95 degrees. Uh, you can stretch a little higher than that. However, you just got to be very careful. I wouldn't go over 97, something like that. And finally, night temp. On one of the sources that I got the information from, that the night temperature could be low to mid or mid to high 40s. And I personally don't trust that at all. I wouldn't let it drop lower than 60s, maybe high 50s, but I certainly wouldn't get it get any colder than that. If that is happening where you are at, certainly put in a ceramic heat emitter or something. Uh, you don't want a bulb at nighttime just because they will recognize it as daytime and not be able to rest. Now jumping into water and drinking, as well as humidity. Humidity should be moderate, so anywhere from high 40s to around 65, 70, maybe a little bit higher. Um, I don't think the, the height of the humidity is really what is concerning. It's just you don't want it to get any lower than about 45. And fortunately to run with that, you do need to mist their tanks at least twice a day. And that is at least twice a day for around two minutes, minute and a half, two minutes. Soak all their plants because chameleons in general do not recognize standing water as a water source. Uh, so having a bowl in the in the bottom of their tank is virtually useless. They won't go drink from it. And if they do, you're lucky. <laughs> but I wouldn't count on that happening. I'd always missed it. That's for humidity and drinking. And uh, you can set up automatic mister. That's what I recommend. You can generally set them to come on as many times as you need based on your area. And for how long you want them to come on. Now I recommend... Miss King systems, they seem to work a lot better. I've had much better reviews from them than any other system, including the Exoterra Monsoon. Personally, I had one of those. It lasted for about a month working perfectly, and then it would just start emptying the entire reservoir of water into the tank in one misting. So careful for that. Another way that they can drink is by drippers. Uh, I've made one myself, and I also have one as well. I don't use it that often just because they drink from the bottle. I've trained mine to drink from the bottle that I have that I spray them with and they do that perfectly. But some can be created by just getting like a milk jug or a, a plastic container and poking a couple pinholes or maybe a little bit bigger than a pinhole and setting it on top of the cage. It will drip down. The chameleons will go for it. Now some of you guys might think waterfalls are a grandiose idea. I made that mistake when first setting it up as well, and please don't make the same mistake as me. I've learned. They are attracted to water, especially waterfalls, to go to the bathroom. And after a very short amount of time, the waterfall becomes a cesspool of just disgusting bacteria and uh, fecal matter from the chameleons. So I highly go against using a waterfall 
Of course, there are exceptions. If you clean it like once a week, every day, something like that, I'm sure you'll be fine, but I wouldn't leave it in there unattended for uh, any lengthy amount of time. Diet should be primarily crickets. That's what mine eat. Um, if you're in the UK, uh, locusts or grasshoppers, they're the same thing. I'd be careful getting anything from outside just in case they've been sprayed by pesticides. However, Kula, as you can see, she gets a whole head of lettuce every week and she chows through that. She eats her live plants in her tank. So be wary of that. For dusting schedule, I've had a couple questions about this. I dust without D3 every single day. A lot of resources will tell you to dust every other day, once or twice a week, something like that. I dust every day just to be sure. I'm sure it doesn't hurt them. Uh, I've seen no ill effects of it. My female has had two huge clutch of eggs and she's still doing all right. So I have, I like to attribute that to something that I've done. And that calcium that I dust with every day is without D3. The label here says without D3. Make sure. I can't stress enough. And as well as one to two times a month, I dust them with vitamins and calcium with D3, like the ones that I'm showing you right now. So now we're coming up on the very end here. The last section that I have here is handling and you guys have seen Rango out multiple times. He loves to come out. However, the general rule is that they're more of a, a viewing kind of animal. A lot of chameleons get very stressed out coming out very often. Uh, whereas Rango's kind of the opposite. He gets stressed out if he's in his cage for too long without coming out. Which is kind of strange. The, the general rule kind of holds true with Kula. She doesn't really like coming out. She kind of puffs up and tries to bite me. So you guys got to know the personality of your chameleon. You have to know its limits. And that comes with time and only time. I can't tell you that every chameleon is going to be like Rango. I can't tell you that every chameleon is going to be like Kula. It's totally based on your care and uh, how much you're in the room, how much you socialize them. That's what will play the large factor. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helped you guys. I know I've had a few people asking me for care video of the Veil Chameleons. Here it is, I'm delivering now. If you like the video, always remember to drop a like, comment if you have any questions, concerns, uh, improvements, anything like that, drop a comment down below. Follow me on Facebook, I actually have a page on there. It's Alpha Reptiles, I'll leave a link in the description. As well as on Twitter, I'll leave a link in the description. And on Instagram, I post mostly reptile things on there, so hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Do remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one and anything else reptile related or plant related, sometimes art related as well. It's been Graphic Phoenix, out of here.